In this video, we're going to take a look at the terrain menu here in your main menu bar. Now, as the name suggests, this is where you go for pretty much all things terrain. And the first option is the ability to create a terrain object, which I'm not going to do here because we already have a perfectly good terrain object. Well, I guess we could, and we just delete it. So if I click Create Terrain, boom, we get a brand new terrain, which we can't really see right now. Well, if you hide the original one and just turn it off. That's true. We could just come over to our Snow World terrain and just... Just let's check up right one. there. I, was, I lost the checkbox for just a second. And here we go. We have a brand new piece of terrain that we have created. Now, moving down in our terrain menu, we can import and export height maps. Right. Now, you don't. You can create your terrain, and you will create a terrain even if you're planning on importing a height map. Now, height maps can be generated th through Photoshop, an image editor, if you want to hand paint it. You can also use third-party height. Uh, terrain generation that export height maps in raw format. Now this gets into an advanced topic that we really don't want to cover here, but it, just let it be known that you can bring in height maps from an external program and bring them in so you don't have to create it inside of Unity itself. Exporting it is if you've created this really cool height map and you want to export it to bring it into a third party um, program like Maya or 3D Max and you want to convert that into a mesh so you can design assets to that um, or height map from the world that you've created, that's what this does. Gotcha. Now down from here we have the ability to set the resolution of a selected piece of terrain. So if I grab the new terrain we've created, come down to set resolution, we have a series of settings that will control the overall size of the height map, uh, its height map resolution, its detail resolution, and so on and so forth. And this is how you go, go about taking your terrain and making it bigger or smaller or controlling how high the hills can be in it, that sort of thing. Now, down from here, we have the ability to mass place trees. Now, for this, I'm actually going to take the terrain that we just created, and I'm going to delete it, and I'll go into my project view and delete that version of it as well, because it exists in both locations right now. Let's go back to our snow world terrain, and we'll make that visible once again, and we'll fly down to it. Now, just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to come over to the terrain menu, Go to Mass Place Trees, because we already have some trees associated with this terrain, so it makes it a lot easier. And then it's just set to 10,000. Let's just click Place. And there we have 10,000 trees crammed onto our terrain. And notice it's looked for uh, the places that make the most sense, flattened areas where trees should be growing. So let's hit Control-Z and uh, go back to the tree layout that we had and move along in the terrain menu. We can flatten the height map. Now what this allows you to do is to control, not only, you can't really control the flattening. When you perform this operation, your height map is going to be flattened, flat as a pancake. But you can control the height it will be at when you are finished flattening it. So for instance, our terrain uh, has a maximum height of 200 meters. So if we set this to 100, it will be flattened at an altitude of 100 meters, and it tells you that's going to be about 50% of your overall terrain. It's very useful if you just created your initial terrain because it starts out at the lowest possible elevation. You can move the whole thing up, and so at that point you can push down as well as pull up at the same time. So let's go ahead and close this and move it back to our last, uh, our final option here inside the terrain menu, which is refresh tree and detail prototypes. This would be if you have made any changes to the actual trees or uh, the detail objects that are scattered across your terrain, and you need to force an update for them. Right. You can actually go in, and you've got prefabs for the trees, rocks, anything else that you're doing. But let's say you create a, you've got a tree, and you decide you know you want a collider on the tree. We'll get into this later. But if you want your tree to collide and it doesn't normally, you can modify that prototype to make it collide. And then you can come up here and tell it to refresh that tree. And it'll go through and refresh all those prototypes. Exactly. And that's just a really quick look at the various options you have here inside the terrain menu. Again, it's really where you're going to go for everything having to do with terrains. And that will wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.